911 once the address of your emergency. Hello and welcome to On Duty with the Marion County Sheriff's Office. I'm your host, Katie Carlson, and in this episode I'm joined with Marion County Sheriff John Layton. In November, Sheriff Layton was re-elected to a second term, and today we're going to take a look back at his first term, and in our second half, we'll take a look towards the future. Thanks for being here today, Sheriff. Oh, it's my pleasure, and happy holidays to you. Thank you, same to you, and congratulations on uh, your yeah, re-election. Yeah, uh, it's, it's quite humbling, it's quite humbling, and, but uh, you know, we move forward now. So as I mentioned, we're going to kind of spend the first half of our episode, we have you for the whole show today, oh, and wonderful. we're going to spend the first half um, looking back at some of the things that you did in the first term, mm -hmm. um, some of the highlights for you, and, uh, and then in the second half we'll look towards the future and really uh, see what you want to, what's still on your to-do list um, to get done. So why okay. don't we start off, if you have any um, favorite <clears throat> memories or uh, things that you're the most proud of from your first term, what would some of those be? Well, on a, on a personal basis, probably one of the things I'm most proud of is after 36 years as a sheriff's deputy, to be elected as sheriff mm -hmm. of the office and the department uh, that uh, you grew up in. and. Uh, I think just about every deputy has that uh, in their mind that someday I could be the sheriff and uh, I, I was no exception throughout my career. I did my best to reach that goal at some point and my golly here I was, you know. <laughs> you know so i you know, very blessed to be in that position to be able to serve the people in Marion County and uh, take care of business in, in the way that I know best to do. Uh, but, but moving on past that election, uh, we implemented some programs at the Marion County Sheriff's Office that, uh, that I'm, I'm very proud of, not myself, but the deputies and the way that the employees at the Marion County Sheriff's Office brought it forward and paid it forward in so many different ways. Uh, for instance, Hope Hall, which is uh, it's kind of an offshoot of under Sheriff Frank Anderson, the mother's jail, which we closed. Uh, but we didn't close it without a plan. And we closed the, the, the uh, Liberty Hall at that time. But by closing that, uh, that hall where we had so many women who were on kind of lower um, charges, such as D and C felonies, um, we were able to save the taxpayers about two and a half million dollars a year. And we, we recreated just about the exact, in my opinion, maybe even a little better, the same environment for these same women right within the Marion County Jail. Uh, we allowed them to pick their uniforms of the day, which they picked pink, um, and we brightened up the cell blocks, things like that, and, and, and put words of encouragement on large posters throughout. And now they're in class uh, constantly. You know, and you, you go up there and here's 100, 120 women uh, smiling that are in jail. How many times can do you ever see an inmate in jail smile? I, in my years, I, I hadn't seen that. 
but virtually they're all smiling because of the atmosphere that they're they're able to create a better me you know as far as they're concerned one of the things I think is neat about Hope Hall is that it's really there's not a whole lot of choices in the Marion County Jail no. but Hope Hall is a choice and they have a higher standard of um, personal of expectation personal expectations That's of right. them that they choose to meet and stay there or um, come back to the to the main jail and but they also are rewarded for that and one of those rewards yeah. here recently because it is the holiday season is um, several of Hope Hall inmates got to come and decorate a Christmas tree with you and you know, great? sing songs and reminisce <clears throat> about you know some of their favorite traditions and except for their orange or their, their pink uniform you'd never know that they were inmates because they were happy and um, they know they're learning. They, they know that when they leave the Marion County Jail, uh, one way or another, they're going to be a better person. Uh, you know, dress for success, how to interview for jobs, how to be a better mother, a better parent, anger management. Uh, uh, so many different uh, programs that they are capable of taking if they, if they choose to. And, and I, I can't be I can't be happier with the way it's turned out. We've had several of the media come up there and take some photos and, and take some video. And uh, it's the same thing every time I go up there. It's just, it's just a wonderful situation. But let's get on to another thing that I'm very happy about, and that's the sexual offender crack, crackdown. Uh, since I came in office, we've really ramped that up. Mm -hmm. Not that Sheriff Frank Anderson wasn't doing a great job, but like I said when I was uh, elected, we're going to take this to the next level. And that's exactly what we've done. Matter of fact, there's a sexual offender sweep going on right now, right around the holidays when people are out and kids are out in the shopping centers, working with the U.S. Marshal's Office, working with our, our federal partners and some local partners in the malls. We have undercover and and uh, uniformed deputies in the area, and they've uh, they've usually about 10 percent of the sweep uh, warrants is a good number. If we can bring in 10% of them, we're up to over 30% now in Marion County. And we're really cleaning up the rent rolls of these folks who, thinks, who think they can, they can uh, do these crimes against other people and then not register once they get out of prison or out of jail. They have to register. When they don't, we go after them, we put them back in jail where they belong. So, and that is just, uh, we're really down to, to where, you know, uh, there's very few left that we aren't on top of. And with 1,500 sexual offenders in our neighborhoods, the deputies do such a wonderful job of staying on top of right where they are, right where they're living, right where they're working, knowing everything about them as, as much as possible. We, we check them about three, three times more than the state law per, uh, requires. One of the things I think is testament to uh, you and the Sex Offender Registry Unit, and you mentioned this earlier, is how few, they're really whittling down the number of people well, who are. we don't know. Um, and this this most recent partnership, or this most recent sweep is a partnership with the U.S. Marshal Service and Crime Stoppers, and they found 39 that they think might be living in Marion County. They might not even be living right. here, and some have been arrested in other places, but they had to really get down to that 39 number, eliminating starting with 90 and eliminating. So that, and, and there's a chance that some of those people aren't even living here, and that's a very small number considering how large Marion County is. Well, we've gone out of state on several people over the last few years to, to pick them up and bring them back. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona. We, we've been all over the United States to bring these folks back. And, uh, it, you know, again, it's, it's a testament to the, to the deputies. But it's not just the ones that are registered. Those aren't the ones, yeah, we need to be watchful, very watchful of them. We know where they're at. Mm -hmm. It's the few that didn't follow the law and register with the sheriff's office those are the ones we have to be wary of and that's why it's so important to get these people off the street and I think another thing that's cool about this um, current sweep is how dependent it is on the people in Indianapolis we've asked the media to share these names these faces of people that we're looking for and that's why where Crime Stoppers comes Absolutely. involved we need their help and Crime Stoppers every day Crime Stoppers helps out the Sheriff's Office, IMPD, our other partners in law enforcement in Marion County. Crime Stoppers is, is second to none in helping us put people, not just sexual offenders, but people in jail that belong there because there's warrants on them, uh, there's crimes going on. Crime Stoppers is incredible and a wonderful partner uh, to all of the law enforcement entities in Marion County. 
Well, Sheriff, there's so much that you've done, but there's one subject I want to touch on in this episode, and I um, plan on making it a future episode of the uh, uh, of On Duty here, but that's the peace dub, and that oh, was yeah. a really big deal uh, in, in October. October 7th, that was revealed. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, you know, I, I go down into the basement of the jail where we keep, uh, down in the armory, where we keep all the guns that have been seized off the streets of Marion County. And it's by state law, the sheriff in each county is tasked with destroying those, those weapons after the case has been adjudicated. So, you know, I'm thinking, what a waste. What a waste just to melt these guns down. I'm not a big gun buff, but I do appreciate uh, when they're carried in the proper manner for the proper reason. So I'm thinking, what can I do with all of these, all this scrap, which is what it ends up being, even though, what can I do with this that would make things better? So I, I uh, created uh, what I call the Peace Dub, what has become known as the Peace Dub, and it's got a, a nine foot wingspan. But what we did, originally I thought we'd melt it all down and build like a statue, but uh, uh, Indy Forge, and our partners at Indy Forge has even a better idea of taking the gun pieces, which you none of those gun pieces are dangerous at all, and making a sculpture out of the pieces themselves. So at a distance, it looks like a beautiful uh, dove. Uh, it's in the shape of a dove, even though it's black. Uh, but when you get up close to it, you can actually see the gun parts that it's made out of. Those guns are the ones that were taken off the streets by the brave men and women of the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police, the Marion County Sheriff, Speedway, Lawrence, Beach Grove. All the p police took those guns off the streets of Marion County. Now they are a monument to not just the victim of those homicides that many of those caused or, or were a part of, but also to the families of those victims who are victims themselves. And, and I've seen so many mothers crying over the caskets of their loved ones and their young ones over the years that I wanted to say something to them mm -hmm. and a place where they can go for solace. And, you know, I think uh, we've had a really wonderful partnership with the library on other projects. Oh, yes. And um, that's where people can, who are watching the show can go and see the piece of now. But we actually did a tour of we a did. small version. And uh, can you tell us about the person who kind of emerged out of the computer room when we were over in the uh, Brightwood branch? Well, there, there was a young man that, uh, that came up to us while we were at the Brightwood branch with the prototype dove. And uh, he had actually lost a loved one recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, tears came to his eyes over the fact that someone was showing honor to those family members and loved ones that were left behind by these senseless acts of, of violence. Um, it, it doesn't matter if someone has been involved in criminal, has a criminal history, been involved in, they're still a human being. And when they pass, when someone takes their life, they're leaving behind people who weren't necessarily in that fray. Uh, so it's those people that are left behind that we still have to remember because that's a lifetime of grief for those people, no matter what the victim might have been into at the time. So that, that's the way I kind of look at that whole piece, Dub, and, and uh, it, it, it warms my heart to know that I'm warming someone else's. Well, Sheriff, it's that forward-thinking attitude that we're going to um, continue uh, talking about in the next half. We're going to take a break right now, but when we come back, we'll give you a little preview for the next four years in the Marion County Sheriff's Office. Workouts are better with music. Business is better with music. Sports are better with music. Education is better with music. Nightlife is better with music. Holidays are better with music. Life, it's better with music. To support the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra with a donation or to purchase tickets, call 639-4300. Welcome back to On Duty with the Marion County Sheriff's Office. I'm your host, Katie Carlson, and I'm joined today with Marion County Sheriff John Layton. In our first segment, we reviewed some of the highlights from Sheriff Layton's first term, and now we're going to take a look down the road at what's coming up. So, Sheriff, you've been reelected, and uh, I'm sure there's still a couple things on your to-do list, so can you give us an idea of what you are um, excited to accomplish in your second term? Well, this, this being the Christmas season, I can only... Uh, I can only 
say that it, it's like Santa's list of things to do, mm -hmm. of things I want to get done for the citizens of Marion County. Um, we are embarking on a time when uh, we have to continue and, and elevate the point of giving back. You know, it's, it, to put people in jail, to build new jails, which we'll talk about in a second, that's all well and good. It needs to be done. But at the same time, we have to worry about the, the, the core source of this violence, what started in the first place. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to working with uh, the next administration on the 25th floor, whoever that might be, to, to help out in those areas of, of poverty and joblessness and things like this. I know it's not necessarily the sheriff's responsibility. No, it's everyone's responsibility. Mm -hmm. If we want to put a lid on violence in Marion County, everyone's got to join in. We've done what we can at the sheriff's office, but obviously it hasn't been enough. And we're going to ramp that up. But let's talk about the new jail. That's, uh, you know, this, this sheriff may never sit in that seat. It's not even scheduled to be done until mid-2018. Uh, if there's any kind of delays or anything, uh, I, I may never be inside that jail. But that's okay, um, because it's not for me. I'll be, at, at the end of 2018, I'll be uh, no longer the sheriff. And the bottom line is, it's for the people who, uh, again, will be the decades of people to come in Marion County. It's for my kids, my grandkids, your kids, your grandkids, to keep them a little safer. Uh, it, it is going to be definitely uh, the face of justice in Marion County. And I'm excited about just being a part of building such, such a, a great location that we can, uh, that we can, that we will know is the safest jail in America. Now, when we talk about the old jail we're in now, built in the 60s, you can imagine there was no, or if any, uh, any, any kind of, of technology built into that jail and very little room. Within a couple of years, it was overcrowded, mm -hmm. really. We've had to struggle since then just to keep the, the numbers down. But when you start putting technology in a little more room, what I was talking about in the first segment in Cope Hall, mm -hmm. I'd like to, I'd like to uh, continue that throughout the jail, not just with women. Mm -hmm. Now, we have, we have programs for men, GED classes and anger management, uh, a lot of faith-based programs. But we can expand that with a, some more room and technology. We can, uh, we can bring in computer systems that they can learn how to, how to get on that computer and, and go to town. And, and then on top of that, with, with interviewing for jobs and dressing for success, they can actually leave this jail and instead of, you know, um, robbing a 7-Eleven or a liquor store, uh, they're going to work every day. Leave with a resume. That's what I want to see. That is a large part of helping out the violence in Marion County. Um, this jail, it's, now you hear me talking about a jail, and we're talking about an entire criminal justice complex. I can't speak for the prosecutor or the, the uh, public defender and the other, other uh, entities that'll be on this project. I can't speak for the jail. And uh, the people of Marion County, not this sheriff, the people of Marion County need a new jail. It's time and uh, they will be well served with one and with absolutely no new taxes, no new taxes. And I think the mayor and I are on the same page there. Mm -hmm. No new taxes to build this and we figured out how to do just that. And Sheriff, we've taken um, this TV show and our viewers on this show on a tour of the jail before, so mm -hmm. it's obvious how old our current sure facility is. is. And it is every year the parts and the labor to fix the, an old facility, a facility that cannot possibly last much longer, is becoming more and more expensive. So there's a lot of really um, uh, practical reasons yeah. why we need a new one. We will actually save, I mean, over the old equipment the outdated dinosaurs that we're working out of now, the very labor-intensive areas that we're working, will actually save three and a half million dollars a year by calculations by going to this new facility. Mm -hmm. That's incredible uh, that we're spending more money to stay in, in this environment than if we could bring it all up to standard and at the same time bring down uh, the asceticism and also 
uh, bring down the violence in Marion County by what we do in the jail itself. Um, I'm very excited about that. I think another important aspect of it too is um, with staffing and right now we, uh, you know, IMPD is understaffed, the sheriff's office is understaffed. Sure is. It takes a lot of people and with the old facility, sometimes some some prisoners in healthcare is a whole other um, discussion, oh, yes. but there are some inmates that require 24 hour one-on-one -on -one supervision sure and um, a new facility could even create um, blocks that could separate people and, and be able to allow um, deputies to watch over more inmates um, in the same area. I think all one has to do is to look at the, some of the floor plans and the artist concept drawings of this new jail. They'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, and and if, if it happens to be a complete criminal justice complex, it's a one-stop shop for anyone that, that for whatever reason has to be within the criminal justice system and their loved ones, which you know uh, mean a lot to me, taking care of them, making sure that they don't become victims themselves of the criminal justice uh, system. And safety for the deputies. Mm -hmm. That's another thing we have to, have to mention is right now this jail is not safe for our, for our deputies and, and the people who take care of these inmates. They do a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. our, our, uh, our teams just, just knock it out of the park, but it can be so much better and, and I'm sure our injuries on deputies are gonna go way down with the new jail. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I implore people to keep an eye out on what's to come mm -hmm. with, with the new jail. I, I think they'll be as impressed as I am. And our office will continue to be pushing out information, oh, keeping absolutely. the public informed um, as well. So I'm sure we'll be continuing to talk about that um, even here on this show. So another one of the uh, ideas I know that you have moving forward, a, a, a lot of people, and I don't want to say it's too late, but you know, when they get to us, they've already committed a crime and are, right. or, or uh, you know, are alleged to have committed a crime and are waiting for um, trial. But you really want to um, be able to push up this outreach earlier and at a younger age. And you've got an idea um, that could help give opportunities to kids who might not have um, those opportunities otherwise. One thing I do when I, whenever I go into another state and I see ideas that they have, I don't see a point in reinventing a wheel. Mm -hmm. If another state or another county somewhere in the United States has a good thing going, I'm going to seize on that and do my best. In Florida, in many states around the Union, they have what's called the Sheriff's Ranch mm -hmm. or the Sheriff's Camp. I have partnered and been I'm very close with the Indiana Sheriff's Association and the National Sheriff's Association. And I have partnered with the Indiana Sheriff's Association in seizing an idea of a sh Indiana Sheriff's Ranch, somewhere located within central Indiana for easy access from the north and south, but a place where, where these kids that grow up, especially in urban areas that they've never held a fishing pole in their hand or a paddle for a canoe, kids who've never slept all night in a tent under the stars. They experience this with the mentoring from other, from deputy sheriffs from around the state. Deputy sheriffs and other volunteers, people who, who champion law enforcement and who'd want to volunteer to help out with something like this. Um, you know, we have right now, ISA, Indiana Sheriff Association, has a camp north and south one week a year. Mm -hmm. We take care of about 60 kids north, 60, 70 kids south. This, this would be maybe 1,000 to 1,500 kids a year. It is in its genesis, its infancy, this idea. We're putting, we have already got together a committee. We're, we're looking for different ways to finance it and everything. But I don't think there's any, any better a help. Like I said earlier, everyone, if everyone would do their part, the sheriffs of Indiana are going to get together and and I really feel that this will be put together in the next couple of two, three years. And uh, each sheriff from each county will be able to choose ch children that are at risk from their county to send to this school, to this camp, to this ranch, to learn from those in law enforcement. And uh, I'll I tell you what, I don't, I don't think there's better teachers uh, for this type of mentoring than law enforcement personnel. To, especially ones that volunteer their time to help mm -hmm. out in a, in a situation like this. I mean, I, I can see some of these children that uh, live in concrete jungles mm -hmm. uh, catching a bluegill on a line for the first time in their life. I can't wait to see that, and I can't wait to be a part of that. 
well, and I know that your leadership, both with the Indiana Sheriff's Association and also the National Sheriff's Association, is um, putting you in a really good place to get that done. And that's something I want to add about um, yes. you. Is is uh, right now you're currently the secretary of the National Sheriff's yes. Association. Yes. And uh, you know, continuing to be a leader and on a leadership track. So you've been a leader for sheriffs in the state of Indiana. You were the sheriff of the year um, for the Indiana Sheriffs Association in Thank 2014, you. and that's a huge accomplishment. And we're uh, really excited because you are able to bring resources to Marion County and to the sheriff's office, cutting edge technology and ideas Thank that you. Um, people, you know, that uh, your your leadership really gives you um, special access to. Well, when, when when I work with the other 91 sheriffs in, in Indiana and the other 3,100 sheriffs across the nation, I feel very blessed. Uh, I am the Secretary of, of National Sheriff Association and that means uh, going up the ladder 2018, the last year that I'm the Sheriff of Marion County, I, uh, if, if good Lord willing, I'll be the, the President of the National Sheriff Association. How can you end a career? Uh, any better than that and, and very blessed for that so I look forward to the challenges though right here in Marion County for the next four years and uh, keep an eye on us uh, it's not just me it's uh, all those folks at the Marion County Sheriff's Office that make this happen and, and keep it going forward for the people of this beautiful county well that's it for this episode of on duty with the Marion County Sheriff's Office we'll see you next time